Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we're on episode number 168. And if you remember from last time, we were working with the Entity Registration Module. The Entity Registration Module allows you to set up events and allow users to register for those events. So it's great for trainings or webinars or anything where you want someone to be able to register for a specific event on your Drupal site. Before we get started, I'm Shane Thomas. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. Also, make sure to check out codekarate.com, sign up for the newsletter, and learn about the ebook, The Five Secrets to Becoming a Drupal 7 Ninja. If you haven't watched the last episode, you might be a little lost, so you might want to go back and watch the first entity registration video. But if you've already watched that, we're going to go ahead and get started. Basically, the only things we're going to do today will be to look through a few of the other modules that come with the Entity Registration Module. So last time we went through just the Registration Module itself. This time we're going to go through what the Registration Entity Access Module does, what Registration Views does, and what the Registration Waitlist does, and how those can be used. So let's first open up our training event that we created. This should look familiar from last time. It has two registrations already completed. As you can see there is a registration form. The first module we're going to look at is this registration entity access. So let's go ahead and turn that on. Once that module is turned on we're gonna come back over here and refresh. Everything should be about the same so let's go ahead and click on settings inside the manage registrations and this is on our event you'll notice at the bottom now that everything else should be the same however at the bottom there is a section called roles that can register and what this allows you to do is it allows you to change on a per on a per, this in this case on a per event basis what roles you want to be able to register so it gives you a little bit more access control, especially if you're creating a ton of events or other types of registration forms that you want to be able to control access to. If you have other roles in certain, and there are certain instances where you want only certain types of users to fill out the form, then this module can help give you that flexibility. And that's all there really is to the registration entity access module. So that one was pretty quick and easy we're gonna look at the registration views module but before we do we're gonna actually look at creating a view because you can actually create a view since it is all entity based you can actually create a view without having to turn that module on so if we wanted to for instance show just registrations since registrations is an entity we can do that and we could specify a specific type, in this case training. And if we look here, let's go to the registration type so you can see that. We only have one type here, which is training, that we set up in the previous video. So we could select that, or if we had other types, they would be listed there. Let's call this training registrations. We'll allow it to create a page keep everything else at the default and we're going to I guess display table instead so we'll click continue and edit now if we add some fields you can see the registration entity has a couple fields that we're going to want this company field is one that we added we may want the date it was created the name field which we added as well uh, let's see, we could put in the URL if we wanted to, and we'll go ahead and show that. Let's leave these at their defaults. And if you look at the preview down here, it shows the two registrations. Both were using the test company with different names. And you can see there's a URL that brings you directly to the registration. So as you can see you can build a view without turning on 
that entity or registration views module and the view works however there are a few additional fields and additional things that that module allows you to do so let's go ahead and take a look at that so let's go back to our modules page let's turn on the registration views module and now if we come back to our view here just go ahead and refresh and now we will try to add some additional fields you'll notice that there's now a registration delete link a registration edit link and even a registration view link and the module does a little bit more than this but we're gonna just show the basics but essentially it allows better integration in with registrations into views so if you are doing a lot with registrations and you want to show them in views you probably want to turn this module on anyways because it it adds some additional relationships to I believe so there, there's a lot of additional points of integration that happen when you turn that module on as you can see now you have edit links delete links directly built in for your registrations so again that's a pretty simple module if you're working with views and you want entity registrations to work well with views it's a good module to turn on like I said you don't absolutely need it if you're just creating a basic view however with the relationships that added that it allows you to have as I mentioned and with these additional fields it's a nice thing to make sure you turn on so let's go ahead and look at the last module here which is probably the most interesting one it is the registration waitlist and what this is going to allow you to do is specify a waitlist so if your event fills up you can still allow users to register for your event but they will be put in a waitlist which means if someone were to back out you could go ahead and fill it with someone that's in that waitlist so let's go ahead and turn the waitlist module on and the first thing it's going to do is it's, as it says in the description it provides a special registration state so if we go to structure registration registration states you're gonna see there is a waitlist option this one wasn't there before as soon as you turn the module on this one will show up so let's go ahead and go to our training test one event so we're back here if we go into manage registrations and go into settings and scroll down towards the bottom there's going to be an enable waitlist checkbox so we're gonna go ahead and check that and then you can specify the waitlist capacity so if you only wanted to allow uh, three or four or five people on the waitlist you could specify that we're gonna leave it at zero which means as many people could sign up for the waitlist as possible I'm going to go ahead and change the capacity on this to two. The capacity again is the maximum number of registrations and that's because I already have two registered and this is going to help show that the next registration is going to go to the waitlist. I'm also going to specify that authenticated users can register just to show you that that access module works. So I saved it now I need to go to the site here I'm not logged in and I'm going to go ahead and log in as the test user go to training test one and go to register since I've already registered once under this user it's telling me I have to register some other person because I'm already registered so I'm gonna register just a test account fill out the information and click save registration you'll notice the message here says registration placed on the waitlist because I'm not actually in the event and if I come back as an admin go to manage registrations you'll see that three people now show up 
and one of them shows up as on the wait list. So as you can see it's a handy module to allow your events to be overfilled just in case someone was backing out or wouldn't be able to attend you could then go to someone on the wait list and allow them to take their spot. So that is it for the entity registration module. Hopefully that gets you started in allowing users to sign up for events, trainings, webinars, and whatever else you might need people to register for on your Drupal site. Again, check out CodeKarate.com. Let us know what you're thinking. What, if you have any other videos you'd like to see in the future, follow me on Twitter at smthomas3, and we will see you next time. Bye.